Okay, so as promised in last week's video, um, where Wayne talked about the entire setup here in the hydroponic house, he is going to now show you the propagation station and answer a few questions that we had. Hello everybody. It's uh, 1st of November, right, today? Oh, 2nd. 2nd, yeah. You can see, we, got a, we had a good dumping of snow last night. I'll bring you outside yeah. later and show you. It's minus 10 most of the weekend, the last three days, so it is starting to cool down. So it's time to do a few few videos, I guess. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to show you how my, my seeding germination setup is. It's very simple, but it's probably the most critical part of the whole greenhouse. As you all know, if you have good plants going in, you're going to have good crops coming out. And uh, we had a lot of difficulties when we first started and got hold of a fellow, Joe Sullivan, down in, in Maine. In Maine, I think he is, or New Hampshire. And he helped me out a lot. So uh, we'll go through this. Uh, what we do up here, we seed our seeds. We seed here twice a week, basically. So it's Monday. We, we planted these Friday afternoon, and you can see they're already... They're ready to sprout, so by tomorrow, I will be moving them from from down, up here down to here. The sooner you can get them out of these trays, the better. For air circulation, water movement, everything, you get a lot better germination. Uh, we do have these on a heat mat. You know, so you can see the heat mat. We can do five trays at a time on this heat mat. We keep it at 72 degrees. And there's. I just want to let them know that there's it's just sitting water in there. There's no nutrients or anything, yeah, yeah. no... Right. Yeah. Straight water at this point. Uh, they say after about three to four days, depending on what, what it is in here, you can see here some beet, beet tops. They sprout really quick. Nice. And because we do that, we try to sell the beet greens by weight rather than by the plants, we put two seeds in every hole. And I think you saw in the last video of the crops that we're harvesting. So, I mean, that's pretty good for three days of uh, planting, or four days now, I guess. So tomorrow, as soon as I have room in these bottom trays, I'll start moving stuff down. So you can see these trays here, they will hold two sheets of Rockwell or Oasis. And they... This runs 24-7. The water never shuts off, and we never shut the lights off. I mean, it just runs steady. You can see the starts back here. We just got a little Home Depot to tote. It's pretty a simple setup. And inside here, we have an aquarium pump. And here's uh, my backup one I can show you. It's just a little pump, $25 pump. Uh, this one happens to be 400 gallons per hour. Uh, that pump has been running for six years now in there. I've had no issues it's the with the same it at all. as the pool pump. Can I just say something though? You said that this never shuts off, it runs 24 7. It only comes oh, on. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, it runs three times a day. I was yeah. just going to say that too, and I always said that. That system runs all the time. Yeah, this one here runs three times a day for 15 minutes. Yeah. And you can see the germination you get in here. We'll, we'll transplant these ones back here as the red oak leaf and the red mirror or the green mirror next week or tomorrow. Pardon me, I'm, I'm all mixed up here. But you look at these sheets. So these are ready. The back ones, yep. the red uh, oak leaf and the the mirror are ready to um, transplant into the nursery trays. And they will be probably ten days old now. A week ago Friday they were planted. So yeah, about ten days, eleven days. So tomorrow will be twelve days. So. So they will go into the nursery troughs. Uh, so you can see it just runs through. Back into this, we just used a, a piece of tube that we had, trough. You could use anything to get the, We have two hoses here and the water just flows back. And uh, when you're looking at getting these trays, you, you can tell, we got the, ours at Am Hydro. I mean, they're probably pot available elsewhere, but I couldn't find them. I had a hard time finding them actually. But, uh, what these, are they called? Just uh, propagation trays. I think they're, they're roughly four feet long, 40 inches long. Like I said, they hold two sheets. Up. And how, do, how, sorry, how deep are they? Uh, about three inches. Three inches, okay. Two and a half, three inches. But they do have different color drains. I've gone with the teal color, and what that does is it allows a certain amount of water, holds the water back, it drains at a certain rate. And it's, I mean, it's been a great setup. And you can see the germination 
And these are just regular blue light fluorescent lights. We haven't done anything fancy under here. Uh, at some point we may switch to LED, but for now we had these fixtures and that's what we're using. Just, just a little harder on the electrical bill, that's all, eh, than oh, the yeah, LEDs. It is. But they're also giving us some heat, which you don't get off the LEDs. You can see some different crops we have in here. We're playing around with some green onions. This is more for our own curiosity than anything. We, we enjoy doing a few different things. The so bok choy here. Swiss chard. Something about Swiss chard. It's a great crop to grow, but sometimes it's a little fussy about germinating. So what I do, so seed is cheap. Oasis costs, it adds up. So what we do is we put two seeds in every block, and then when we go to transplant them, we'll pull one out. And the bok choy, though, we do know that that does really well here in the wintertime. We don't grow it in the summertime. And again, multiple seeds. Yeah, you can grow one individual seed so and get a nice big bok choy, but you can put three and four seeds in a block, and you would not believe the weight that you will follow. Okay, we'll follow this through right to the finish so you guys can see how the, the bok choy is just gorgeous in this system. So, I mean, this is a fairly simple system. There's some more beet greens. Uh, they'll be going out tomorrow probably too if we have some space in the finishing troughs. Nice. So, which is a very simple system. You know, you can source pretty well everything at your local hardware. You might have to get some specialty parts from the specialty companies, which, which is fine. I mean, we've had to get a few things, but most of it we source out locally. Uh, a couple things I wanted to mention about from the last video, I had some questions. Well, one of them was about these troughs. We found ours at Anhydro, but I mean, you can, and they're out of California. That I think they're about $50 each, but I'll tell you, it was money well spent. And they're very sturdy. They're not just a flimsy tray. We've had them five years now, five and a half years, so I mean, we wash them out. When we're done, we switch the troughs, and I mean, they've been great. So the other, the other thing, the pump. Our big swimming pool pump over here for a reservoir. I had some que a question about going from 110 to 220. Okay, so we are hardwired. We are wired. I shouldn't say hardwired. We're wired for 220. You can see here. I've got. I broke the line and put a couple plug-ins. Well, if the hydro ever goes off, we've got to start up our generators and and keep this running. So we unplug it. I plug into my generator that I've got here set up out here. But in this cap, you can pull this cap off, and in there you can just pull the wire, there's a little clip, you can pull the wire off, the clip off, and go on to another wire, and it'll switch it to 110 for you. So if you don't have a big generator, you can run off a smaller generator without any issues. Like you say, this pump has been running for six years now, it's pretty warm today. <laughs> so, I mean, I hope that helps. Uh, you have any other questions about the startup and stuff? And you can see here, from this this section over to this section to the nursery trays, here's some stuff that's going to be going in the finishing troughs tomorrow. You know, so they came out of here about a week ago, out of there into here. And we can only move things along as fast as we can har as we harvest it, harvest it, or have orders. So we have a time time down pretty good. We know we need ten. 10 of these every week in the winter time. So that means I need four, four tr oasis trays every week. And that would change for anybody who yeah. is doing this depends because, growing, yeah, exactly. Right? It depends on, on the market for it. Our northern climate things are a little slower, but we do know we take a quarter of this greenhouse now every week. You know, so we, uh, it's just a matter of getting your schedule down and figuring out where you are and what you're moving. You're just pro at this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So any questions, just leave them in the comments below, and Wayne will be more than happy to answer. And uh, we are going to do a video from seed to finish, actually, and we'll show them yeah. how we do all that. We might do the nutrients next week, so we'll get going on that, and then we can go from individual varieties and everything. Right. We'll do one or two every episode. Or yeah. Video. Perfect. All right. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye.